Imagine the fluid entering this pipe with a bend at location 1 and leaving at location 2. Notice how the fluid changes direction right after the bend. And something interesting happens because of this. There's going to be a resultant force developed at the bend. And this resultant force is the force exerted by the fluid on the bend. And it's actually the same force that's exerted from the bend on the fluid. The critical question is this, how can we determine this resultant force? We can rely on the law of conservation of momentum, or in other words, the impulse and momentum principle. This principle says the force in any given direction acting on the fluid is equal to the rate change of momentum of the fluid. And in equation form, it looks something like this. On the left side of the equal sign, we have the resultant of all the external forces acting on something we call a control volume. And a control volume is just the arbitrary point in space where something interesting happens. And that's going to be right at the bend. Then on the right side of the equal sign, we have the rate of momentum of the fluid that's going to leave the control volume in the same direction of the force minus the rate of momentum of the fluid entering the control volume in the same direction of the force. For convenience, we're going to break down this impulse and momentum principle in the classic x direction and y direction. This results in the following. In the x direction, we will have some of the forces in the x direction is equal to the rate change of momentum leaving the control volume in the x minus the rate change of momentum entering the control volume in the x. The same applies in the y direction. Some of the forces in the y direction is equal to the rate change of momentum leaving the control volume in the y direction minus the rate change of momentum entering the control volume in the y direction. We can take out the flow rate and the density because that remains constant. Then we're left with the change in velocity, which is the V2, the velocity leaving the control volume, minus V1, the velocity entering the control volume. Now that we have the impulse and momentum principle equations in the x and y directions, we can start plugging in variables and numbers. But before we do that, we will need to draw free body diagrams. Let's start by drawing the free body diagram of all the force vectors acting on the control volume. The first force we will denote is the resultant force developed at the bend. This is the crucial force that we're typically trying to determine. But what we will do is break this down into its respective x force component and y force component. We will also denote the angle theta which will help us get the direction of the resultant force. The next force we will denote is the weight of the fluid force. This is going to act strictly down in the y direction. Note, we typically neglect this weight force because it's going to be so small when compared to the other forces acting on the control volume. Now we will denote the pressure force at location 1. Since we're dealing with pressurized flow in a pipe, there will be some pressure at that location and that pressure produces a force. The force is going to be F1, which is equal to the pressure at 1 times the area of the cross section at location 1. And lastly, we will denote the force developed at point 2 by the pressure at point 2. There will be some pressure at point 2. This pressure produces a resultant force F2 acting in that specific direction. Note the direction. It's acting in that direction and it will act at a certain angle we will label alpha. So we will need to break this down into a force F2 in the x direction. Now in the y direction, we will have F2y. That's going to be the pressure F2 times the cross-sectional area at 2 times sine of alpha. Now let's draw the free body diagram of the velocity vectors with respect to that control volume. First, we will denote the velocity V1. This is the velocity entering the control volume. And notice V1 is strictly in the x direction. So we can say that V1 equals to V1x. Now we will look at point 2, which is the velocity leaving the control volume. And we will label that as V2. Notice the direction. It's acting at some angle. And that angle will be the angle alpha. We will need to break this down into its respective x and y components. 
V2X is going to be V2 cosine of alpha, and V2Y will be V2 sine of alpha. With these free body diagrams drawn, let's bring back our impulse and momentum equations in the X and Y directions. Let's focus on the X direction. In the X, on the left side, we will put all the forces. So we will use the force free body diagram. The first force we will denote is F1X. This is the pressure force developed at point one. Notice it's gonna be positive because it goes to the right and it's strictly in the X direction. The next force we will denote is going to be the force at point two developed by the pressure at two. This force must be in the X. So we will pick out specifically the F2X force and this is going to act to the left. So we must maintain the sign because we're dealing with a force vector. So we're going to put a negative sign. Let's keep going and denote the last force, which is going to be the force at the bin developed by that resultant force. And we're going to pick out the FX force at the bin because we're looking in the X direction and it's going to be negative because it goes to the left. On the right side of the equal sign, we will have the flow rate times the density times the change in velocity. The change in velocity simplified into V2 minus V1. V2 is the velocity leaving the control volume in the X direction minus, we must always keep that minus, V1, which is the velocity entering the control volume in the X direction. The same steps are applied in the Y direction by applying the impulse and momentum principle in the Y direction. Focusing on the left side of the equal sign, we know we have some of the forces. Let's focus on the free body diagram of the forces. The first force we will denote is the pressure force at point two. That's gonna be a force in the Y direction acting down so we're going to do that as a negative because it goes down. That's F2Y. And we can break this down further as P2A2 sine of alpha. The next force we will denote is going to be the weight force. Note again, we can neglect this if we're told. If not, we must consider this. It's going to be negative. We must put that negative sign and it acts down in the Y direction. Now, the last force we will denote is the force in the Y developed by the resultant force acting on the bend. This is going to go up, so we will put a positive sign for this. Note, there is no force at one in the Y direction. As we see in the figure, the force at one developed by the pressure at one is strictly in the X direction, so we do not include it in the equation. On the right side of the equal sign, we will have the flow rate times the density times the change in velocity in the Y direction. In the Y direction, we will have the velocity leaving the control volume, which is always V2. And in the Y direction, it's gonna be V2Y. It goes up, so we will put a positive and we can break this down further as V2 sine of alpha. Now we do the entering. Entering is always the velocity one. In the Y direction, the velocity one is zero. Notice the direction of the velocity. It's strictly acting in the X direction. So there is no velocity entering the control volume in the Y direction. With these equations, we can plug in any values we're given to find the resulting force in the X and the resulting force in the Y acting on the bend. Then we can determine the total magnitude of the resulting force using the following equation. And lastly, we can determine the angle theta at which this resultant force acts using right angle trigonometry. If you're looking to put what we just learned into practice, join me in my civil FP prep course where we put this into practice, solving relevant FP type problems. I'll see you in the course.